In the previous lecture, we had discussion on proportion and now we are going to understand direct proportion and indirect proportion. So let us start our discussion with direct proportion. When we have two quantities and the nature of variation of the two quantities is same, we say the two quantities are directly proportional. For example, if we have quantity A and we have quantity B and when you increase quantity A and this makes increment in quantity B as well, then we will say that the two quantities are directly proportional. Very easy to understand. Now we will move on to indirect proportion. When we have two quantities and the nature of variation of the two quantities is inverse, we say the two quantities are indirectly proportional. For example, if we have quantity A and we have quantity B and you increase quantity A and this results in decrement in quantity B, we will say the two quantities are inversely proportional or indirectly proportional. So this is all about understanding direct proportion and indirect proportion. Now we will take one example of direct proportion. We have 5 books costing 20 rupees and we need to find the cost of 8 books. Let us say that the books is our quantity A and the price for the books is our quantity B. Now what type of proportion we have in this case? Initially, we have quantity A as 5, then we have quantity A increased to 8. Quantity B is 20 and when you increase quantity A, that means when you increase the number of books, what will happen to the price? The quantity B. The price will also increase. It is obvious. The price will increase. It will be more for 8 books than 5 books. So when you are increasing A, B is also increasing and therefore we have direct proportion between books and price. So we will have A proportional to B and we know this sign. This is the sign of proportion. Now we also know that when we remove the sign of proportion, we multiply this quantity by a constant. So if I remove it, we will have equal to in place of it and we will multiply constant, let's say K to B. From here we will have K, K will be equal to A divided by B. Now this constant K will remain same for different values of book and prices. So I can say if we have A1 over B1, we will have same constant. Or if we have A2 over B2, we will have same constant and so on. Now focus on these two. A1 over B1 equal to A2 over B2. From here we can have our price. A1 is equal to 5. B1 is equal to 20. A2 is equal to 8. And B2 we need to find out. So we will have 5 divided by 20 equal to 8 divided by x. Let's say the price we need to find is equal to x. From here we will have x x will be equal to 20 divided by 5 multiplied to 8. 20 when you divide by 5 is equal to 4. 4 multiplied to 8 will give you answer as 32 rupees. So 8 books will cost you 32 rupees. So I hope you now understand the example of direct proportion. The same answer you can have following the unitary method as well. 5 books is equal to 20 rupees. So 1 book will be 20 over 5 rupees and therefore 8 books will be equal to 20 over 5 rupees multiplied to 8 giving us 32 rupees. So in this way we are done with the direct proportion and now we will move on to the example problem of indirect proportion. In this problem we have a piece of work and five men are doing this piece of work in 10 days. Now we have increased the number of men. We now have 10 men. We now have 10 men to complete the same piece of work. And this time we need to find how many days 10 men will take. So what do you think? 
the same work is being done by five men and ten men five men are taking ten days and ten men who will take how many days it is certain that ten men will take less amount of days than the five men so quantity a quantity a is increasing initially it is five and then it is ten quantity b will be decreasing initially it is 10 and later it will be less than 10 so a is increasing b is decreasing and therefore we have indirect proportion in this case now let us shift our focus on finding out the number of days 10 men will take to complete this work we know they are inversely proportional so we will have proportionality sign and the other quantity will be inverse here it was not inverse because we had direct proportion and here it is inverse because we have indirect proportion now again we will remove the proportionality sign we will have equal to and the constant k will be multiplied from here we can say that constant k is equal to a multiplied to b and this will remain constant k will not change for different values of a and b so it will be equal to a1 multiplied to b1 and it will be equal to a2 multiplied to b2 now focus on this a1 b1 equal to a2 b2 a1 is 5 b1 is 10 a2 is 10 and b2 we need to find out and let us represent b2 by x we need to find x x will be equal to a1 multiplied to b1 divided by a2 so number of days taken by 10 men is equal to 5 multiplied to 10 divided by 10 so from here we have the answer equal to 5 days so 10 men will take 5 days to complete the same amount of work which was completed by 5 men in 10 days so I hope you now have the clear understanding of direct proportion and indirect proportion and this is all for this lecture. I will end it here. See you in the next one.